Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my Floss Tube channel, Animal Instinct. It's the 30th of December 2022 and I'm back again. Hello. <laughs> uh, this time I'm going to share my finishes from the year. If you found me from my whip parade, hello and welcome. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll get to see sort of some of my, I guess, varied stitching style. I don't think I've got a real style. I just stitch what, what appeals to me. <laughs> and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. I um, have plenty in here that you will have seen this year, but I do have some extras that I've finished since my last stitching update and a couple of little bonuses um, scattered in there too. So keep an eye out for those. This is not going to be anywhere near as long as my epic whip parade. So if you have seen that, thank you for <laughs> getting through it. <laughs> it was fun to film, but I didn't really realize how long it was going to end up being. So let's just jump straight into it. The first two pieces I'm going to share, I'd already finished the stitching before this year, but I have um, fully finished both of them, so I thought I should include them. We'll start with Seeking Refuge. So this is Seeking Refuge by the Scarlet House. I stitched it in 2020, um, but I got it framed this year. I entered it in the local show and it won, a, and it won a ribbon, which I was very excited about. And I just thought this was very apt for 2020. I did change the um, some of the text there just to reference the year that we lived through. Hopefully I have better lighting today, although that ring light was just really annoying. So we'll <laughs> see how we go. The other piece that I fully finished this year, but I finished all of the stitching in 2020, um, was my 2020 Be Well and Stitch uh, Cross Stitch Quilt. Still haven't come up with a, a, a catchy name for it. Um, I'm not going to show it all uh, right now, but you might have seen this. Um, to show you, I guess I can show it in pieces. <laughs> So these are all pieces I stitched in 2020. Many of them were from, I found through the Be Well and Stitch hashtag on Instagram and others just fit the theme of a 2020 quilt. Um, and I finished the quilting this year. If you wanna see this in more detail, um, I have filmed a whole video showcasing each of the pieces. Um, I'll pop a link in the description box below, but I think it's about number 49, something like that. Um, there we go. With the rest of the finishes from this year, you're going to see a deficiency in fully finishing them off. I have a nice pile of finishes and I really do need to do something with them. So I'll get there. Right, so I'm just gonna go in order um, that I finished them. So first up is the Cryptid Stitch Along by The Witchy Stitcher. This was started in August, 2021 and I finished it in January this year. Here is the finished piece. It's on a beautiful piece of linen from number 12 Stitch Co in Duck Egg, which is a really pretty uh, green. It's often hard to show, hopefully you're seeing it. Um, so this was a mystery stitch along where a different creature was released each week for several months. And I managed to stitch the border before it all started and I kept up most of it but towards the end I got a bit behind um, but I did manage to finish it off um, not too long after it had all finished. Oh did I show? I can't remember what I've shown, sorry. And So that is Cryptids by The Witchy Stitcher. I stitched on it for about 10 days this year, about seven and a half thousand stitches. My next finish is definitely a favorite. Um, it is The Witcher. So 
Oh, he's magnificent. <laughs> Charted by Sarah Bowman. Um, I purchased this from the pattern from Needleminder Lair on Etsy. I started this in November 2021. Um, I wanted it. I wanted him to be bigger, but I sort of had a few false starts with fabric choices. I started him on um, 18 count Ada and then swapped to 16 count and then went back to my trusty 25 count. So this is 25 count cream Lugana, one over one full cross. Um, I, what is it? The, so I stitched on him for 34 days um, back in March, April this year. And I did something a little bit different with this one. I'm absolutely rubbish on social media. Um, but I shared daily progress on Instagram and I loved all the encouragement and motivation I got um, through that. It's an enjoyable piece to stitch anyway, but that really helped and um, that really helped me to um, just carry on and finish him. So there's 29,000 stitches in this piece and all, I'm sure in large part thanks to those of you who encouraged me. I somehow averaged out 850 stitches per session, which I don't, I don't know how I did it. Just one of those special pieces, I guess. But doesn't he look great? Need to frame him. Um, while we're on The Witcher, this is kind of related, and I haven't showed this before, I don't think. Um, while I was stitching The Witcher, I binge watched The Walking Dead and while I was on my Walking Dead kick, I found the website Fandom in Stitches and it's got foundation paper piecing um, patterns for different scenes from various fandoms and I found a block um, of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead and so kind of The Witcher, The Walking Dead in my mind are kind of all entangled. <laughs> Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I've made a project bag, uh, celebrating both of those things with a little bit of a, a joke as well. So, um, the crotch stitcher is just a joke, but sort of a take on the witcher. And that is my Dale Dixon, uh, foundation paper paste quilt block turned into a project bag. Um, this was really hard. <laughs> I ended up making two of these bags because um, I thought surely if I tried to make two one of them would be good enough to gift and they actually both turned out really well um, but it's very fiddly um, if you're not familiar with foundation paper piecing you have a paper template that you sew your fabric sew your fabric together onto the paper template um, you can see all the little bits individual pieces in there and then you have little blocks that you then sew together and then um, rip the paper out afterwards. Uh, it took me a few goes. I did have um, <laughs> regrets about trying it. I thought it might have been a little bit too much for me. Um, but I found a good tutorial and I really enjoyed it and I'd like to do some more foundation paper, paper piecing in the future. And it's just got this um, nightscape fabric on the back, which I thought worked because a lot of the... Um, Walking Dead and Plenty of the Witcher is, is it happens at night. So, um, yes, <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's got a little bit of stitching. Um, the, the amount of time that went into making that, I don't even want to think about. My third real finish for the year was Bushland Quaker by Mojo Stitches. Um, this was a birthday start from last year and um, I started a heap of projects for my 40th birthday and I've actually finished a couple. <laughs> um, so this is a beautiful piece. Bushland Quaker. It's stitched on 40 count linen in week tea by Jay's X Stitch. I like this. This piece is a great um, uh, Aussie, Aussie piece. So Australian themed um, uh, flowers. Designed by an Australian designer. Um, the fabric is from an Australian dyer, Jay's X Stitch, and it's got a combination of DMC and Cottage Garden threads, which are also Australian. So I bought the thread pack from Joanna from Mojo Stitches, and 
love it. I spent just 10 days working on this one to finish it this year. I do, again, need to frame it. I've actually got a frame. I just need to put it in the frame. <laughs> so it's really pretty. I've got the second one uh, kitted up, ready to go as well. And while we're talking about Mojo stitches, I participated in a Christmas gift exchange this year with a group of lovely Australian stitchers. Most of them I didn't know, but it's been really nice getting to know everyone um, throughout this process. It's been a lot of fun. Um, so we each got given a name and an address. So we had to make something um, and send it to that person. And I was lucky enough to receive a gift from Joanna from OJ Stitches. So this is the um, little Christmas ornament that she's stitched and it's just beautiful. Look at that. So pretty. So pretty. I love it. And just the simple way of finishing it with this um, silk sari ribbon, I think it is. Oh, just love. Love, love, love. Very, very, very lucky to have received that. She also included some extra little goodies. Um, just quickly show you. Have some thread drops. Um, There is some more silk sari ribbon for finishing things. It's really nice. Um, we have some buttons, which always come in handy. I don't know if I can really show them. There we go, just a few little buttons. I already have something um, planned that needs buttons, so perfect. Uh, some beautiful cotton guard, cottage <laughs> garden threads. Look at that. It's, I'm seeing these everywhere at the moment, so it's good to see that they're, they're doing well. Um, and some special uh, Liberty fabrics. For, I'm not sure what yet, but they're very, very pretty. That was an absolutely beautiful gift. I, the person's name that I received <laughs> to make a gift for was Nicola <laughs> at number 12 Stitch Co. Um, who dyed the linen I used for my cryptid sow. Um, I was very excited to get her name, a little um, intimidated, <laughs> but I thought, well, I have to stitch something with her linen, definitely. I'll pop a photo in. I just stitched a little piece, um, a little gingerbread man piece that I put on the lid of a jar. Um, and then I also just wanted to do a little sort of homage to her amazing business. And I stitched a little pillow with number 12. On it. Um, so thank you Joanna for the beautiful gifts. I have received some other Christmas gifts as well um, but I'll share them at my next just regular stitching update. I feel very lucky to have such um, gifted and generous friends. Right back to my finishes. Next up is um, Time Traveller by Joan Elliott. This one was started in 2019 and I finally finished it in July this year. There she is. Um, she stitched on 32 count Belfast linen in Gothic by Picture This Plus. And I spent 25 days working on this pattern this year, um, on this project this year, including four beading sessions. Was about 10,000 stitches all up. She also needs to be framed. Um, 
Next is one that I have actually fully finished. Surprise, surprise. This is the Raven artwork by Lorna Lane. It's um, a kit from Gecko Rouge. I'd stitched on it twice in 2021. Um, I started this last July and I picked it up again in July and just really enjoyed working on it. So spent 16 days on it, 11,000 stitches, done. Um, it was kind of like The Witcher. I just got in a groove and I just, yeah, I just wanted to stitch. <laughs> um, it's stitched on 25 count. Um, Lugana, one over one full cross. I am um, the day after I finished stitching it, I fully finished it. So it's very productive. I don't know what, <laughs> what got into me. Um, it's very lightly quilted. Um, there's a little bit of quilting here, here, and just that sort of outline. And I've just done some loops to hang out with. Although at the moment I've just got it propped up um, on my bookshelf with something heavy sitting on those loops. I love this finish. Um, I have the companion piece, the cat, and I plan to stitch it and finish it the same way. Okay, next one is another one I started back in 2019. I started this when I started my, um, I did some extra studies in veterinary public health, emergency animal disease management, so outbreak management. Um, I finished the course in August 2021 and I <laughs> finally finished the stitching on this in August 2022, even though they both sort of started at about the same time. Anyway. This is my finish. So this is my animal stacks. There's four animal stacks from Plum Street Samplers. We've got, um, oh gosh, now I'm gonna have to remember. Cow pile, sheep heap, goat load, and snort stack. So the kind of diseases I was studying are diseases, mainly diseases of livestock. Um, stitched on 36 count natural Linen in the called for threads. I'll just come in a bit closer. That one, the bigs. The sheep, I use some whisper and some other fluffy thread to make them feel like unkempt sheep in need of a shear. Um, that's the goats. And then the text that you can see, I have gone into this before, but just quickly, that is. Uh, my topic of study, emergency animal disease management. That's the, um, the name and the years that I spent doing that course. And then I just included some of the diseases around the edge just to tie it all together. Foot and mouth disease, avian influenza, there's an absolutely horrific outbreak of highly pathogenic avian influenza I know in both UK and I think the States at the moment. Um, it's African swine fever. Varroa destructor, Japanese encephalitis, lumpy skin disease. Now, sadly, when I stitched these, well, we, we have had an outbreak of Japanese encephalitis. It seems to have come into Australia now. I don't know if it's going away. Um, but since I stitched this, we now have um, Varroa Destructor in the country. We were the last, uh, I think it was like the last inhabited large island free from Varroa Destructor, which is a, a parasite of um, bees, it's a mite very, very invasive, can cause up to 100% mortality in beehives, um, and they also spread disease. And unfortunately, yeah, we, there's an incursion of Varroa um, destructor right now. Um, so I think they're still trying to um, see if they can get it under control, which is a big challenge. Anyway, that's enough on that one. Again, another one I need to frame. <laughs> Next up is a little mini Starting to finish in a day. Oops. 
This is Plan Tatad. <laughs> Doesn't look like much. It's from um, the French designer Poine Amour. Um, and when you signed up um, to this project, they sent you a frame from um, the whole um, series. So that's the frame I got, it's a little tadpole. And then there were rules about, um, you know, you had to stitch it on a certain size Ada, frame it in a certain size hoop, send them photos of it with a certain amount of background showing. Um, and you send them a few and they picked, they picked the, the photo they preferred and then they, they spliced them all together into a little animation. I didn't know if I could share the actual animation. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description box below on it's on Instagram. It's a reel and it's, it's quite amazing. Um, the picture they used for mine is there's some laughing clowns behind, behind it. Um, it took me a little while to, to find it because it flicks through them really quickly, but it's very, very clever. So that was a fun, a fun one. Next was, um, well, it feels like a really recent finish, but it was a couple of months ago now. Um, this is my cricket scene from John Clayton, the John Clayton collection. It's a um, heritage stitch craft, I think it was. Um, pattern, can't quite remember. That is it. This one, again, I've been through this before, but my mum started stitching this piece in around about 2000. Um, uh, my dad was a cricket umpire. Um, he still <laughs> loves his cricket. Uh, anyway, I carried it on. I was going to carry it on and finish it for her a couple of years ago in about 2020 and didn't love the fabric and the needle had rusted into it as well. So I just restarted it. It's on 32 count antique white linen and I'm really happy. And this is another one I must frame. So cricket scene, county cricket scene from England. Next up are the um, Huga Stories series from New Leaf Craft. You can't get these patterns anymore. Um, so there's one, one a month for 12 months. They're seasonal, uh, aligned with the Northern Hemisphere seasons, so not quite right for us, but that's okay. Um, this was another 40th birthday start. I stitched the first one um, last year and then didn't come back to them and then decided at the start of this year I'd try and do one a month uh, until they were done and I have done that and I would like to finish them I think still into two cubes but I haven't really thought that far ahead. So they're stitched on 28 Count Brittany Lugana in Aether by Chromatic Alchemy and each one took about two to three sessions so they're only small they're 40 by 40 stitches but they're kind of jam-packed with details as you'll see and I'll just yeah I'll just show them one at a time. So that was um, the first one I stitched last year. It's the June block. This is where I started from this year. This is um, the July block, which I stitched in, I think, February. Uh, and you actually had there are instructions on how to make this woven net, which is very clever. August. September, October, November, that's such a cosy scene. <laughs> December. January, February, March, 
March. April and May. Here we go. So 12 months done. Need to work out how I'm going to finish them. All right, so the next ones, I think I've... Oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> I might have finished them since my last stitching update. I can't quite remember. Anyway, this is Under the Sea by Jureen Jones, available through Lakeside Needlecraft. It's stitched on 32 count Opal Murano in Caribbean Seas by Jodie Redesigns. Designs. Started in February this year. Um, and yeah, just finished mid-December. And this one was a really fun stitch. Finished off with the my initials and the year in the drum. Okay, um, two more. This is my Stiotch Along, number eight from this year. So a mystery stitch along with a choose your own adventure ending. It's stitched on 16 count Ada in Opal by Picture This Plus. I did it in seven stitching sessions and I created my own Schitt's Creek ending. So we got given they're up if at first you don't succeed and then they gave us 16 options there are a few in there that i thought i might do and then i just decided to go with a schitt's creek just why not very funny scene from schitt's creek okay my last finish i finished um on christmas eve i started it in june um, it's the witchy stitches um, kind of companion stitch along to the cryptid one and it's supernatural stitched on 32 count Belfast linen in cocoa dust by number 12 stitch co and had a lot of fun with this one Um, before I show you the bottom row, I'm just going to pop a little montage of how I finished the bottom row. So for all the other creatures, I did them one at a time, um, but I was a bit behind and I had all four at the bottom to go. So I put this in, in my scroll frame and I tackled it a little bit differently. I stitched the black border for all four and then I stitched the text for all four then all the black in all in the four blocks. And all the colour and then there was a little bit of backstitch and French knots um, to finish up with. And here is the bottom of the row. So we have the ghost, the demon, the fairy and the harpy. So whatever I end up doing, <laughs> I'll do to both. I'll finish these both the same way, but um, let's have a look at them together if I can manage it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. I kind of need a third hand. No, it's not going to work. Anyway, cryptids <laughs> and supernatural both on absolutely beautiful linen from um, number 12 Stitch Co. Duck Egg and Cocoa Dust. All right. Now, if you watched my whip parade, I showed um, a piece that I was hoping would make it into this finished parade. I haven't got there, but I just thought I'd just show you 
where I'm up to. I'm very close to finishing this piece. This is Wilbur by Teresa Kogut. Um, stitched on 18 count Opalescent Ada from Esther, the Danish stitcher. And he's not quite a finish. I've just got to fill in this and some in here. But he's so cute and hoping to get him done by the end of the year. Which is why I thought I'd just show, show him in here too. All right, that is everything. Had a really fun year this year. I've got plenty, um, plenty done. Um, I love all my finishes. Need to think about actually fully finishing them, plus others from before this year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what 2023 brings. Um, Want to wish you all a happy new year, and we'll see you next year. Bye.